That's right, we're bringing Elden Ring back onto this channel. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry guys, but don't fret because we are back and we're back with a banger. This time we're going to be discussing my top five weapons to use in Elden Ring. And by no means is this a list that's the best weapons to be using. This is simply my favorite weapons to use, the ones that I have the most fun with whilst playing Elden Ring. And I also want this video to be a basis for you guys to go in the comments down below. Let me know what you have the most fun using and let me know what combination of weapons you guys use to absolutely destroy bosses and just feel like an absolute god because it'll be interesting to know what you guys use compared to what my favorites are and whilst you're in the comments down below let me know what you guys use do also hit that subscribe button and the like button as well lets me know that you're enjoying this type of content it's a brand new concept on this channel i know many people have done it before but it's new for us so if you want to see more videos like this like i say hit the like button and make sure you're joining the trend of subscribing as well we have been absolutely blowing up recently um or at least for this channel approach 1500 subscribers which the original goal by the way was for 500 subscribers by the end of this month we've almost tripled that I'm lost for words so thank you so much for the support that you're showing on this channel so far and if you want to jump on board like I say hit that subscribe button down below before I ramble on too much about that let's jump straight into the reason why you clicked on this video and jump head first into number five now if you're ever going to see a list showcasing the most overpowered or the most powerful weapons pre 1.06 or even after, this weapon is probably in that list. That weapon being the Rivers of Blood. Now I had to throw it somewhere in this list because it carried me through my first ever playthrough. As soon as I picked up this sword, I don't think I let go of it until walkthrough number three. It literally swamped everything for my first couple of playthroughs so much so that I unfortunately got bored of using it because I was using it that much and that's purely really the only reason why it's at number five because still to this day I'm a bit like meh do I really want to use the rivers of blood yes it destroys everything but it takes the fun out of the game pretty much and with the patch it did obviously lessen its power and lessen the bleed build that you have with the ash of war but still to this day it is a very useful weapon to pick up it's definitely one of those that's going to carry you through the first couple of playthroughs still although it may not do as much damage as it did before it's still an incredibly useful weapon you do feel like an absolute god of a samurai when using it especially when you see the blood splattering across your screen and you see the enemy's health pretty much get cut in half in the matter of seconds but as i say the gimmick does wear off very quickly you do very quickly understand that you are now becoming an lt or l2 simulator the gimmick runs out very quick and it does get a tad boring after a while as bad as that sounds it's true i had to put this weapon in the list somewhere because it was my favorite at some point in time but it becomes number five because there's four more which i genuinely have a bit more fun using in the game especially nowadays and moving on to the first of which number four that's actually going to be a more recent discovery being the wing of astel as i say i personally only recently started using this and it has featured in a previous video in actual fact my elden beast video that's on the channel because i found that this method was the best way after the 1.06 update in order to defeat both Radican and the Elden Beast and pretty much any other boss leading up to those fights. I definitely found a great satisfaction in the way of defeating enemies with the skill power on this weapon, the nebula that you spread in front of yourself, albeit you need to be on top of the enemies. If you hit all of them, it stuns the enemy and makes them null and void. And every time you hear that noise, it's just such a satisfying noise when you know you've broken your opponent's guard and there's nothing that they can do to stop your critical attack that follows. Again, mainly due to it being a more recent pickup for myself or at least a more recent weapon that I'm discovering to use and use correctly within the game. That's why I've pinned it ahead of the Rivers of Blood. And if you want to check out a more in-depth way to make this weapon the most effective it can be, do click over to that Elden Beast video because it showcases the character build for that and you will not be disappointed let me tell you that for sure as long as you match the specs on that character build you will be an absolute god spreading carnage through the nebula skill power now number three is another classic actually on this channel i say classic i think the video was made about a month ago maybe two at a push um but that's going to be eleonora's pole blade again another bleed based weapon 
but I put this one ahead of the Rivers of Blood. Why, you ask? Because it's literally two Rivers of Bloods stacked on top of each other <laughs> to make a double-ended pole blade. And it actually reminds me of playing a very old game, a very old favourite game of mine, Soul Calibur, in which I always used to use a character called Killick, and he too also had a very similar moveset and a very similar weapon to the pole blade. And yes, nostalgia is a key factor in this, of course, but much like the Rivers of Blood, the special move with the pole blade deals incredible amounts of damage purely because its DPS is so much higher and you hit off a lot more hits, creating a much quicker build up in bleed, allowing for a large amount of health to be depleted from your enemies by constantly doing bleed depletion. Like I say, what's better than one rivers of blood? Two rivers of blood attached to each other, spinning around in your hands, hitting enemies about five times per second, causing a mass amount of bleed damage. Like this weapon is probably still the best for bleed builds and I'll go ahead and say this now, twice the blades, twice the coolness factor. So there we are, that's why it's at number three. But on to number two and that's going to be the Bolt of Grand Sex. Hey look, three for three, three weapons that I've already featured on this channel. It's like they're my favourite weapons or something. What are you going to do about it? Anyway, the reason why this is at number two is because I'm going to ask a very simple question. Who doesn't want to have the ability to summon a lightning bolt with your hand and throw said lightning bolt between your enemy's eyeballs? Exactly. Well, that's what you can do with the Bolt of Grand Sex. Not only is it a good weapon for thrust weapons, so to keep your enemies at a distance just in general, the Ash of War, as I say, turns it into an ancient dragon spear and you just launch it at their heads, causing massive amounts of damage, both staggering, knocking enemies over, and dealing heavy amounts of ancient dragon damage. Of course, you do need to scale this weapon, much like every other weapon in this list, but once you hit the right stats and allocate your stats in the right area, you can pull off what is possibly the only thing that is more satisfying than hearing the guard break on enemies, and that's doing this. I mean, defeating an enemy, especially a dragon, you get bonus points for that, by launching an ancient spear between their eyeballs straight through the cranium, that is pretty damn cool, if you ask me. I know I'm sadistic, but that's why it's at number two. But now, for number one, what could it be? Could it be, I don't know, something like the legendary Sacred Sword? Could it be the Blasphemous Blade? Could it even be the Dark Moon Greatsword? It's been a staple throughout Dark Souls, so it makes sense considering it's been around for a while for it to grow on people and become the favorite. No, none of those. Believe it or not, my favorite weapon that I'm using right off this moment, and it has been pretty much ever since I've had the ability to use this weapon, it's actually Morgoth's Greatsword. As much as I like to say that the Rivers of Blood carried me through a lot, and my favorite weapon really, bar this, is the Bolt of Grand Sex, and it's featured so much on this channel, there's always been this Morgoth's Greatsword that has been hidden throughout my character's build and it was actually the first weapon that I maxed out and smithed to the highest level using the somber smithing stones. And as I mentioned, as much as I like to say the Rivers of Blood carried me through the first playthrough, it was actually this weapon that carried me through until I got the Rivers of Blood and until I realised just how good the Rivers of Blood was trying to defeat Melania. Bar that, I'd actually completed the game using Morgoth's Greatsword. The reason being is it still also has that bleed build, but its special ability also deals extra fire damage, and much like the Nebula, also staggers enemies much quicker than the Rivers of Blood. This weapon was actually the first remembrance I used to obtain a weapon whilst progressing through my first playthrough, because I was holding on to the remembrance, because again, playing past Soul games, I knew they were going to be used for something, and this was the first weapon that I used mainly because I was drawn to it by the colours when Morgoth was using it against me, but I wanted to see, because it fit my build at the time with the strength and the dexterity, to see what it was capable of. And oh boy, <laughs> it was pretty damn good. The unique Ash of War allows for a consistent flurry of attacks, whilst also mixing in just your general light attack and heavy attack as well, where the delay of the explosions from the Ash of War can just keep enemies staggered throughout the fight. And as I say, this was the first weapon I was using which genuinely felt overpowered and that actually killing a boss 
allowed me to become said boss. To this day, I'm actually still using this weapon. The footage you're seeing in the background is from the other day using it to showcase just how incredible it is in regards to the power output. I'm in playthrough five in the footage and I'm taking out the surrounding trolls with relative ease, having to use it a couple of times, but you stagger them after the second or third time of using the skill power, in which case they're dead. That's it, done, they haven't got a chance. And considering they're one of the enemies with the highest health pretty much within the game, other than bosses of course, it shows you just how easy this weapon can take anything down. I like the fact that you do have to mix in some skill though, as much as I'm showing you against the trolls that are fairly easy to kill, against bosses you don't have as much time to just constantly use the skill power, so you do have to use it effectively, and when you pull it off, it genuinely gives you that satisfaction that you have accomplished something, and you genuinely have beaten that boss all ends up. There's no cheat code or BS of just L2, LT spamming with the Rivers of Blood or Bolt of Grand Sacks. If you defeat enemies with this thing, you genuinely feel like you've accomplished something. And like I say, it does still have that nostalgia feel because it was the first weapon that I used, that I genuinely liked using, liked the moveset, and leveled up to the max level, wasting my first ever ancient dragon somber zone, and just becoming an absolute beast with it. But as I say, those are my favourite weapons. I know they're probably not the best to be using in the game at the moment, but they're definitely the weapons that I'm having the most fun using, especially Morgoth's Greatsword. As much as you probably think I'm memeing, I'm genuinely not. If you haven't got it, Go and get it, level it up as much as you can, and I promise you, you'll be thanking me in the comments, I swear. Of course, you need to level your character to the right specs, but as long as everything matches and the stars align, you are going to be doing an enormous amount of damage input and having a lot of fun with that weapon. Of course, as I said at the beginning of the video, do hit me up in the comments down below to let me know what you guys are using, because it'll be interesting to know what weapons are out there. I haven't personally used every single weapon in this game, so it'll be good to know what's out there and what's effective and what's fun to use. And if you haven't used any of the weapons in this video, be sure to go and use them, because like I say, you're gonna have an immense amount of fun if you do happen to use these weapons. And just before I sign off this video, as I say, do subscribe to this channel. Um, I am looking to do Elden Ring videos on a constant they are still coming as a constant pretty much on a weekly basis i have also started a new series like a playthrough kind of different vibe of a video with my friend luke so we've got two types of content coming out on a weekly basis our playthroughs that we're going to be doing with luke at the moment is borderlands maybe different games in the future and also elden ring content such as this so if that's sounding like your kind of thing do hit the subscribe button, do join the many of you now that have joined this channel and subscribed because we're starting to build a nice little community here and be amongst one of the first few to ever subscribe to this channel. That's pretty much everything from me guys, so hopefully you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button if you have, but otherwise I hope you have an amazing rest of your days and I will catch you in the next video of whatever it is that I make. Bye bye.